Eight advanced features of chaos scatter that you may not know about. Okay, let's take a look at number one slope and altitude limitation. You can actually limit the scattering of instances to the area that are within specific slope and altitude ranges. And you can do this using the built-in limitation option in the surface scattering rollout. This can actually come in very handy in two scenarios, okay? The first one is when scattering trees on top of uneven mountain surfaces. In such cases, you can use the slope limitation to make sure trees don't grow on steep areas and areas that are really, really vertical. So basically, this feature helps with making the scene make sense realistically assuming you are into that sort of a thing okay if if not you can actually let the tree grow from the wall like let it grow out from the wall nobody's going to beat you all right now with this slope limitation settings no instance will ever appear on surfaces that are steeper than 45 degrees okay now the second scenario where this feature comes in very handy is with the altitude limitation as the name already suggested you can limit vegetation from being scattered at certain heights or depth Okay, you can set your vegetation to start at a certain height and add at a certain depth. For instance, with these settings, the instances can only appear in the ranges that I've set it in here, as you can see. So it can take its counting from what zero position or wherever I set it to, as you can see right here. Now, the second feature we're going to be looking at now is the look at feature. Okay, with this feature, you can make all your scattered instances point towards a single object in your scene. This look at feature can be found in the transformation rollout under rotation. You can see it here. Okay. It is very useful when it comes to making crowds focus their attention on a specific object. I can't figure that one out yet, but I'm working on it. Now, the second instance where it comes in very handy is making sure all objects are facing exactly the same point. Now, I'm going to demonstrate this second option to you using the kettle. Now, I'm going to activate this feature. As you can see, all of them are pointing towards this object in the middle this cylinder in the middle okay now when you look underneath here you're going to find out there are other other features here that you can turn on all right you can see that these kettles are tilting upwards if you want to restrict it to be on the on the horizontal plane all you have to do is come down here and check the horizontal as you can see here so when you do that it's going to align things you can go ahead and play with other features there and find out what they do all right now the third feature we're going to be looking at is the 1d 2d and 3d scattering all right now under the scattering rollout you can choose between three modes 1d on spline 2d on surfaces and then 3d in bounding box i mean the name <laughs> the name the meaning is already attached to the name but i'll still explain it to you that's my job 1d scattering is intended for distributing model along splines i mean look at the name 1d where are the objects being distributed on splines this mode can be very useful when you want to create hedges or you have a client who for some reason wants you to line up trees for him or her in a straight line then this is the right mode for the job and also this can come in very handy in placing street lamps okay now i want you to know something here all right 1d on spline mode can distribute models both in closed spline and in open spline unlike the 2d on surfaces mode okay let's talk about that 2d scattering is the most common mode in this mode hmm, objects are distributed on surfaces and on an enclosed spline surfaces also include 3d surfaces you can distribute on sphere in fact you can distribute on surfaces no matter if it is horizontal or vertical or even a mountain i mean i just you just saw me do that all right note a closed spline can be used in this mode too in this situation the model will be distributed on areas enclosed by the spline's border now if the spline is not enclosed it is not going to work until you change the mode to 1d on spline now when you do that it is not going to put it on the spline now when you change it to the 2d spline it is just going to disappear and but then if the spline is enclosed it is going to appear like you're seeing it appear now now let's take a look at the 3d scattering this 3d in bounding box 3d scattering distribute models in the bounding box of whatever surface you want to to distribute that model on it can be used to populate books on a shelf or add those particles in a room or wood next to a fireplace and stuff like that okay anytime you want to populate books on the shelf this is the right mode for the job now the next one we're going to be looking at is editing instances we can edit the individual instances created by the chaos scatter using this option 
By edit, I mean you can move, scale, rotate, and even delete any model you have instanced here by Chaos Scatter. All right? And you do that by going under the surface scattering rollout and then click on the edit instances. Now you can do whatever you want. However, there are important things I'd like for you to note. After you have edited the instances, they will reset back to their original state if you do any of these things. If you move, rotate, or scale the surface the models are hosted on. And also, if I switch from count to density-based scattering, it will reset. If you change the density map, it will reset. If you edit the scatter using features like camera clipping, that might make the one that you edited disappear. Or include spline or remove spline, that might actually make the one that you edited also disappear. Or avoid collision. All this can get rid of what you have edited or reset it back to the original state. So what does this tell you? Editing instances should be done only after finalizing the state of the original model and the whole scatter. Now the second thing I want you to note is, if you select 100 or more instances at a time for it for instance editing purposes you will see the following warning the one is simply trying to tell you that since you want to make changes to all these instances to this many instances why not just make the instances to them with chaos scatter instead but then you can suit yourself if you want to still go ahead and make changes to more than 1000 models you are welcome to do so chaos scatter will not stop you now the third thing i want you to note right when you edit any model instantly, it will, when I when I say instantly, I mean when you do instance editing, it will be ignored while you edit others using the transformation rollout. Okay? If you scale it, if you move these things, if you even rotate them, they will be ignored because you have decided to edit them individually and then they will be there. But I remember the first thing I said, there are things you will do, it will reset back to its original state. Don't do those things if you don't want them to reset back to their original state. Now, let's move on to the next feature that I think you may not know. Now, this feature is edge trimming. Starting with Corona 9, back when it was still scatter 2, instances consisting of multiple mesh elements can be trimmed so that they stay within the boundary where they are being distributed. Take a look at this grass. This is what it looks like with edge trimming on. Now, take a look at it, what it looks like without the edge trimming. Cool, right? Now, let's take a look at how to use it. If you're using Corona 12, edge trimming option is just available as a checkbox. You just check it and things will start happening. But if you are using earlier version, not earlier than Corona 9, of course, edge trimming is provided through the new Chaos Scatter edge trimming map, which you can find in the material editor under the Chaos Scatter category. Or you can just search for it over here. That is an easier way of doing it. But if you want, you can just come down here and then drag it in. Okay, now that I've got my edge trimming map up out here, what next? I will take the material picker and pick the material of this grass or whatever I want to trim. Then, with the materials in here, I will plug the edge trimming map into the opacity slot of the material. In case of multiple models with different materials, plug it in on all opacity slots of the materials used. Now, if your material already has an opacity texture, okay, as you can see, all you have to do is to pass that existing opacity texture through the edge trimming map. Plug it in through the map default slot. Once you have done that, you can now preview it using the interactive render as you cannot see this thing with your naked eyes in the normal display mode that you can see in the viewport. So if you want to see this edge trimming, all you have to do is do an interactive render or even do production render it is going to come out then now let's take a look at the next feature this is very useful this particular feature i'm about to tell you about is very useful when you want to optimize your scene but then it comes at a cost now let's take a look at it this is called camera clipping camera clipping limits the distribution to the camera view models that are not visible in the camera shot will be clipped away it goes without saying that this feature helps optimize the scene, making passing speed faster while lowering memory usage. But then, this optimization comes at a cost. And this cost is the cost of missing reflection and shadows. Because objects outside the camera shot still interact with the scene, just not openly as the one in the shot. To compensate for this, you can use the Instant View option. Okay, camera clipping support various camera types, be it native camera, V-ray camera, perspective, autocamera, fish eye, any one you want. Even viewport preview is supported by this camera clipping. Okay, the camera clipping modes. Active 
render camera. This mode clips the instances based on the camera view used for rendering. In this mode, clipping is not visible unless changing clipping parameters or running an interactive render. If not like that, the clipping would go crazy while you are moving from view to view trying to carry out your regular scene work. Okay, and you don't want that to happen. That will affect your system. So, it only works, it only shows up when you are making changes or when you are doing interactive render or actual render. Okay. Now, the number two of the clipping mode is the specific scene camera mode. In this mode, you select the camera you want for the clipping and the clipping is always visible because now you have told the, the clipping, this is the camera I want. So, clip it using this camera. So, it's always showing you what's up. Now, let's talk about this mode, the extend view. You know, I talked about it a few minutes ago. Now, let's talk about it now. Now, camera clipping works with camera cone okay the cone of this camera it works with it so the extent of the cone of that camera is the extent of the clipping but with this extent view feature you can add extra zone beyond the camera view okay behind the camera view too if you want this helps to ensure correct shadows or reflection from instances that would otherwise be clipped now let's take a look at the near and far override this helps specify the near or far threshold distances from the camera Okay, instances that you are distributing on this surface that are closer or further than this threshold that you have specified gets clipped away. Okay, the ones that falls within, it goes without saying that they get retained. Okay, let's take a look at the next one, the surface color map. Now, while working in 3ds Mask and Corona, sometimes you might want to color the scattered instances based on the texture of the distribute on object distribute on object is the object where you are hosting all these other objects on the object where you are distributing your scatter objects on okay a good example of this is scattering strands on a carpet mind you you want each strand to get the color of the carpet surface lined underneath okay now with chaos scatter this is very possible thanks to the surface color map you can find it in the same place we found the edge streaming map or you can just search for it. This map automatically takes the diffuse color of the distribution object, I already explained what that is, and then passes it to the instances which are scattered on it. The map itself takes only the diffuse color but it can be applied to any material property of the scattered instances. Example, you can apply this on the roughness, the opacity, you can even apply it on the bump. Okay. It just depends on what you want to achieve. Let's take a look at some other interesting things you can do with this. Okay, I, I assure you, it is going to blow your mind. Now, the next one I want to show you is using texture to control scatter transformation. This feature allows you to drive the scatter instances, translation, rotation, and scaling using texture or colors, or anything that can get plugged into these respective map slots. Okay, and also you can use it to determine where you are spreading these instances on. All you have to do is just put the right map in there. Now, the first instance, I'm going to use the RGB using the gradient ramp. I'm going to create a, a red and green and a blue. Strand. And I'm going to use it to control the transformation, okay? And uh, let me just quickly edit this. Alright. Now let's go and plug it into the, the transformation. Starting with translation. Now you know how when you are trying to select something to move or to scale, you will see in the gizmo, a part of the arrow will be green, a part of the arrow will be blue, while the other one will be red. And then the red arrow moves in the x-axis while the green arrow moves in the y-axis the blue moves in the z-axis it works the same way here you see this the way this is rgb that's the red green and blue it is going to the red part is going to be controlled on the x-axis so when i plug in this map and i come over to the translation let me put it in translation now okay let me minimize that let me bring out my interactive bring out my interactive render okay if i'm making changes to the z axis it is only going to affect the part where the blue is on the surface okay it is not going to make changes to everything so if i should come over there and make changes to the y axis it is going to affect only the y if i make changes to the z axis 
to the x axis is going to affect only the x you can see the one moving this z axis now okay that same thing also applies for the y axis okay as i'm moving it you notice that it is shifting only the part that is being controlled by that uh, green part of the map okay that leaves us with the red part of the map which is going to be controlled by the x axis so it's just like that even when i want to scale it it is still going to be controlled parts by parts okay that is how that map how, that's how you can use color or map of any kind to i just this is an example of it okay we can also use a black and white radial map to also do this thing but for when you want to use color rgb color this is how you can actually do it and now it is not going to affect everything it is going to affect a certain part of the of the plane that is the distribution object okay it's going to affect a certain part of it where that particular color is affecting okay you can see by the way this thing is moving you can see that this this board is divided into three now all right so that's how it basically works so now so let me go ahead and show you what that looks like in rotation and then in scaling okay after that we're going to look at how to use a radial map a radial black and white map to control how objects are distributed on the surface where you want to distribute the objects on Now I'm going to create a radio ramp that is composed on black and white and then I'm going to use that to determine where I'm going to spread this on. Okay? Just play around with these things. You're going to discover a lot of things that might come in handy in your next project. Alright. So I'm just going to select this chaos scatter and then drag this map into the map in the surface scattering rollout. Okay? And immediately I did that, you find out that it created a hole for me in the middle. Now, the application of this is unlimited. You can use it anyhow you want and then get results you want in your project. Okay? Now, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching this video. I will see you. I will definitely see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>